But in the meantime, there's somebody that did live up to our trust that's right behind you, Ken. Marvin, marvelous yep. Marvin Hagler, the great one. He lived up to our trust. Every time he got in that Don ring, we knew what he was going to give us. Everything. Yep. R.I.P. to the great Marvin Hagler. Brockton zone, just outside of Boston, home of Rocky Marciano, the Brockton Boxers football team, and the great marvelous Marvin Hagler. Tr terrible loss for the sport, terrible loss for uh, humanity. Just a good dude all around. Was never in the media, never in the press. Just, well, you know, when he was in the ring, he just handled his business. And after his life in the ring, he was uh, quite the movie star over in Italy and uh, came back to the U.S., led a relatively quiet life. We tried to get him on the podcast. He was uh, not one to do a lot of press in later years, but um, terrible loss for the sport. And I know you have a lot of thoughts and opinions on uh, Marvin Hagler. Oh, boy. Marvin Hagler... Way, way too often, we use the term out there in media of throwback. We use great too, too easily too. Why? I think sometimes because we don't know. You know, sometimes there's people in there that are supposed to be pundits, that are supposed to be in a responsible position of knowing, Ken. I, I think sometimes they just, they really don't know that much, as much as the public would hope they know or would think they know because they're in that position but they don't and so sometimes that word is thrown around almost to the point where it loses some of its strength some of its credibility it should not be lost with Hagler great belonged with Hagler and the other thing that again that we use too often that again just gets used I think sometimes because the people using it want that athlete that performer to be thought of the best since they're around to obviously be talking about them during their time, that they're around to be the broadcaster for them, if if you will. So they say, oh yeah, he's, he's great, he's a throwback. But great and throwback really did deserve to be mentioned in the same breath when you mention Marvin Hagler, because he was a throwback in a way. First of all, he didn't fight for his first world title to 51 fights. Who the hell does that? I mean, who the hell does that? If you go back to the 20s to 30s to 40s, the greatest ever of boxing when it was bigger than bo baseball and fighters had 300, 200 fights and they all fought each other and sometimes three, four, five, six times. Well, some of them didn't get, some of them didn't get to main events to 30, 40 fights, much less world title fights, they earned their way. And that's kind of what you imply when you say throwback, that somebody earned it. They did it the hard way. They did it the right way. Marvin Hagler did it the right way. He did it the hard way. He was a throwback. Uh, he, he went and sought out, I'll say it again, he sought out all the best middleweights in the country, and they were in Philadelphia at the time, and he fought them all in their hometown to the point where he lost two fights. One was to uh, Boogaloo Watts, and the other was to Willie the Worm Monroe. Now, the one with Willie the Wor Worm Monroe, real slick guy, as you would think, a worm, right? It's kind of slick. It's hard to grab. It's hard to grasp. You know, that's why the, I guess you would have that nickname. Um, he he lost that fight. And he, being the honest guy he is, he said, I still got a lot to learn. And that guy I just fought, he done learned it already. <laughs> he already learned it. And I got a lot to learn. And he sure as heck, he went and learned it. And he lost also to Boogaloo Wops where he got robbed. But he came back, and of course he learned, and he beat Willie the Worm twice. He stopped him once. So, and he fought Benny Briscoe, who was a ton of a puncher, granite chin. I mean, he, he fought all the top Philly middleweights, and it got to the point where a promoter there, one of, a Hall of Fame promoter over there, Russell Peltz, 
And he's got a book who's, that's going to be coming out. And people should look for that if they really love boxing. They really should. They should look when it comes, just like when Mike Silver, the great historian uh, in boxing, there's very few people that know the sport like these two men. If they really care about the sport and the history of the sport, they really should get their books. And Russell Peltz will be coming out, and Mike Silver's is out already. But the point is that Russell Peltz was a young promoter back then, and the Petronelli brothers... Managed and trained Hagler. And the promoter usually doesn't do this. The promoter wants a great fighter like that fighting in his city, right? Yeah. But he actually said, Russell and someone else, actually said to the Petronelli brothers, why do you guys keep coming here? <laughs> why do you guys... And you know what he said? The Petronelli brothers, Goody and Pat, they said... Because Marvin insists on it. He wants to fight the best. He wants to become the best. And there's only one way to do it. Fight and beat and learn from the best. And that's what Marvin's going to do. And he did. And he cleaned up house eventually. And it's part of what obviously was his growing curve to become the, gr the great Marvin Hagler. Um, and his attitude that he's not going to, you know, look to navigate around like they do today and the promoters do today with the partners of the networks where they keep a guy undefeated and they don't give him the fights that the fans want to see. They don't give him the fights that are the obviously the most difficult and they don't give him the fights that are going to form them into a guy like Marvin Hagler. <laughs> because sometimes you, sometimes you got to go into the fire to really meld, to really forge that sword. You want a sword of steel that will stand up, that will not break in combat, no matter how difficult that combat is? Well, you have to forge it in fire. Hagler forged himself in fire, and he was the man of steel. He really was. I mean, he was Superman to me. Because punches bounced off Marvin Hagler the way bullets bounced off Superman. I mean, that, that was Marvin Hagler. I mean, the chin on that guy, the determination, the will, the character. I talk often about strengths and talents being more than nowadays. We all jump on the neon talents, Ken. You know, the flash. The, we, we don't even wait to see if the guy lasts more than 11 minutes. But he's, he's flashy. Oh, whoa, 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 the greatest I ever saw. Oh, really? All right. Can you wait like seven more minutes? <laughs> to see if somebody <laughs> else comes down the pike that, um, that, you know, that's also fast. And, and, and that was Marvin Hagler. And. That's Marvin Hagler. And because Marvin Hagler, he showed the attributes I talk about when I talk about true strength, true talent, true traits, true abilities are more than just the neon ones. If you, you want a friend in life, you want somebody, we talk about politicians, what you wish you would have in a human being, in a person. What do you want? You want someone who's dependable, trustworthy, somebody who's reliable, somebody who you can count on, somebody if they're your friend, you call them at one o'clock in the morning, they don't hang up on you. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, <laughs> they don't remind you what time it is. You know what they say? Okay, I'll be there in 10 minutes. That's what you want. And you get it sometimes, but not too often. You got it with Marvin Hagler, okay? That's what you got, Ken. That was his power. That was his strength, along with all his physical attributes and everything else and the way he could fight and be in his southpaw. And he could fight inside, outside. He could counter punch. He could box. He go get you. He wear you down. He break your ribs. All of that stuff. All of it. But he was dependable. He was loyal. Loyalty is a power. It's a strength. If you can be loyal in your life to people when it's difficult to be loyal, you're a strong person. You have strength. You have character. He was loyal to the Petronellis during a time when it was awful hard to be loyal to him in that, in that business. People coming to him saying, what the hell are you doing with these guys? Come on. 
Really? And you want to throw race into it? With race, everyone throws race into it. I, I don't know. I, I, I'll throw it in there. The, the Petronellis were both white. And Hagler said, I don't care anything about color. I just care about a commitment I made and a commitment they made to me. That's all I care about. There was a famous story that they told him that they, he could get a flat fee to his manager. And he said, they're going to continue to get in 10% of my purse. And if you bring it up again, you're fired. Yeah, I mean, that's what you, that's what you want to hear from a person who has that kind of that kind of character. They helped to develop him and got him to that point. And he said, they're with me from the beginning. They're staying with me while I was at the bottom. Now they're staying with me at the top. And I don't want to hear any more talk about it. And that kind of strength, that kind of character, that kind of philosophy in life, it is power. If you're strong enough to stand behind somebody when it becomes difficult to stand behind someone, when it's less convenient, when somebody could be offering you more money somewhere else or more whatever somewhere else, and you have the power, the strength, the resolve, the belief to stand behind that person, that same strength will show itself in whatever you do in the ring. It will show itself. And it showed itself with Hagler. It was always there. It was always there. The guy would never, ever let you down or let himself down or submit. If he didn't submit to those things, he wasn't submitting to anything in the ring either. And talk about the greatest middleweight. He was one of the great. Carlos Monzon has to be in that mix. Uh, Harry Greb has to be in that mix. 300 fights back in the 30s. Um, I mean, my God. Uh, Carlos Monzon, incredible. Uh, those kind of guys, but Hagler is right there. Hagler's right there. and But Hagler, you get two for one. He's not only the greatest middleweight or one of the greatest middleweights of all time, he's one of the greatest southpaws of all time. So you get both with Hagler. And he, like I said, he fought everybody anywhere, anytime. Everybody. And he was no frills. He didn't come up with a silver spoon. Damn it, he didn't even have a freaking spoon. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he had? He had those things. You remember this, Ken. I, you know, you, I know you're looking young and all that, and you are young, and you're young of spirit, young of heart, and you keep yourself in great shape, but you can go. We all remember this a little bit with those wooden spoons. <laughs> remember those wooden spoons when you got the good humor ice cream, and they broke, you know, because the ice cream was hard, and the spoon broke, and... <laughs> You, you put it, yeah, you, you dug it out with your teeth, <laughs> you know, at, at the end. Like, you know, you just did what you had to do. But but you had wooden spoons. That's what Hagler had. He had a wooden pallet, whatever whatever they call that scooper thing. That's what he had. That was Marvin Hagler. <laughs> he didn't have no silver spoon, you know. He didn't have, he didn't get an Olympic gold medal. He didn't have all that, which is great. He didn't have the money from the promoters, the big money and the hoopla. No, he didn't have, he just had Marvin Hagler. That's what he had. It was enough. It was enough. He earned every freaking thing he got. Every freaking thing he got. And boy, oh boy, he really built himself into some kind of man, some kind of fighter. He, he really was a throwback. And he was, he was the guy that his whole life followed in that kind of thing. Like, He's a guy that wasn't spoiled. He's a guy that, you know, had to do it the hard way. Well, sure enough, sure enough, when he wins the title finally, I think it was in his 56th fight, 56th fight, when he wins the title finally, he has to go to England, and he fights Alan Minter, a damn good fighter, a good boxer. He goes to England, he fights Alan Minter in a, in a stadium over there with, with all, you know, hostile obviously fans against him, and he destroys Minter. He cuts him up. He, he, you know, he takes him apart in three rounds. And again, consistent with what I'm describing, that nothing easy went to Marvin Hagler. He's got to now deal with a, a rainstorm of bottles that are being thrown by the freaking stupid fans that, you know, that 
I mean, why do you do something? But it happens. It happens. It, it happens in, in in sports. It happens in life. And stupid things sometimes. And they're throwing freaking bottles at. He wins the world title, the greatest moment of his life after going through everything, fighting all the top guys in Philly, going to everyone's hometown. Yeah, Dealing with everything, getting robbed, coming back, winning, and and now he's got to have bottles thrown at him. They actually had to cover him up to get him out of there. The Petronellis, they they covered him up, they they shielded him, they and they they ran out of there. They got out of there. But again, when you think about Marvin Hagler, that was it. He everything he did, he he did it. He didn't do it the. <laughs> the easy way. He didn't do it the easy way. This was a a big loss for us. He left us way too early. Um, I hope the people feel that, and I hope Marvin and his family feel that what I just said about him is enough. Because with a man like him, you never think it's enough. You do your best to give a tribute to him that is proper and worthy and I hope I did but Marvin Hagler he was special and I had one other thing who the freak fights John Mugabe get his record for me will you Ken while I'm talking who fights him he's undefeated with all knockouts the guy could knock down not one 25 and 0 25 and 0 25 KOs right Ken yep 25 and 0 25 KOs the guy could knock down not one wall but three walls Okay, and he goes and fights him, and he, I mean, it was a brutal fight, and he winds up taking him apart and ruins the career of Mugabe, and Mugabe was never the same after that, but who fights guys like that? Who just says, yeah, give me him too. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Off the heels, that, that was off the heels of beating Tommy Hearns. Off the heels of being Kenny, I'm so glad you you put that in there. I've, I've, and the, to really give it the proper perspective, and off the heels of beating Tommy Hearns, which some people think it was the OK Corral, <laughs> it was the OK Corral, it was the shootout at the OK Corral, where some people think it was the greatest fight of all time, you know, or the greatest three rounds of all time, uh, and and he, all for that. <laughs> Or for that, he goes and he fights a guy 25 and 0 with 25 KOs. Um, that was Marvin. And as Hager. soon as he was done with him, he faced Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah. And it took a lot out of him. <laughs> it took a lot out yeah. of him. I'm taking nothing away from Sugar Ray Leonard because that was a great man. Great. That was a great fighter. A great fighter in any era. Any era. And that's how I judged them, that they could be in any era. Split, de split decision. But, yeah, a lot of people thought Hagler won. Some people thought it should have been a draw. Yep. You know? And then that was Hagler. He, he took off, went to Italy, and did those, those movies, those action movies over there, and came back with an Italian accent, which I loved. I loved it. I loved <laughs> I loved it, too. I loved it, too. And I, and I loved Marvin Hagler. And rest in peace, champ. I want to read you a quote from the um, Hagler Hearns documentary. Um, after the second round, the doctor went in to check on Hagler's eye. And, and the quote from the, um, from the documentary reads like this. Uh, Blood continued seeping down Hagler's face and still now suspended proceedings to call for the ringside judge to look at Hagler's injury. When, Hagler, when, when Steele asked Hagler whether Hearns was visible, Hagler retorted, well, I ain't missing him, am I? The doctor counseled forbearance and the fight continued. <laughs> I love you, Marvin. God bless you. Rest well, champ. Rest well, champ. You were great. You were great.